We want to find the max, the x value for the max and the min of this function. So if we look at f of x equals x cubed minus 12x minus 5, we know that this has an in behavior of down, up. So we've worked with enough of these that we know it's probably going to be loopy where it hits a max, it comes down, hits a min, and then goes up. We want to find the actual x value that the max and the minimum occur. And how we can do that is we can use the derivative. So first we're going to find the derivative f prime. So we do our power rule. We have x cubed, so we're going to multiply by 3 out front. x squared minus the derivative of 12x is just 12. The derivative of negative 5 is just 0. So there's our full derivative, 3x squared minus 12. And the idea is we want to set the derivative equal to 0 because we know that a slope of 0 means that it's a flat slope, which means we'll be at our peak or our valley. So we have this set equal to 0, and now we just need to factor it. So first we factor out a 3. 3 times x squared minus 4 equals 0. And then we say 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. So then we get that the derivative is equal to 0 at x equals 2 and at x equals negative 2. So now we know where they're flat, and we may be able to reason which of these is a max or a min without doing the work we're about to do, but I want, to get used to, I want you to get used to this table format for proving whether it's a max or a min, and uh, just talking, like comparing the derivative and the function in table form. So I'm going to set up my table really quick. So I have my interval from negative infinity to negative 2, where the derivative is first 0, and then my interval from negative 2 to 2, where the derivative is 0 again, and then we go from 2 to infinity. These tables may look familiar from unit 2. That's why we did this in unit 2, was to start to get, uh, to get used to this format. So uh, we want to figure out, is f prime positive or negative, right? So is f prime positive or negative right here? Well, if we go to f prime, 3x squared minus 12 has an end behavior of up, up. So we know that it needs to start positive, and it needs to end positive. So it's positive, right? Which means that f of x is increasing on that interval. If, if, if f prime is positive for that whole interval, f of x is increasing for that whole interval. And then we say that it crosses at negative 2, and it crosses over and becomes negative. So the derivative goes from positive to negative. So then now f of x is decreasing. And then it crosses again to go positive, and then that means the f of x is now increasing. So what we see is, we see right here, f of x goes from increasing to decreasing. Let's use green for that because it's max. Increasing to decreasing, and right here it goes decreasing to increasing. So that means that we have a max at x equals negative 2, and we have a min at x equals 2. And we found that maximum and minimum by comparing what's happening in the derivative, whether the derivative is positive or negative, and what that means for the actual function. Positive to negative means increasing to decreasing means max. Okay, so let's try another one. Here we have our next function. So first we're going to find the derivative, which we're going to get 3 times 2 is 6x squared minus. Okay, again, 3 times 2 is going to be minus 6x to the 1. And then the derivative of 36x is just 36. Derivative of 14 is 0. Okay, we're going to start by factoring out a 6. 6 times x squared minus 1x minus x uh, minus 6. Okay, we want to factor that now. So we get 6 times x minus 3 times x plus 2 which tells us the derivative is going to be 0 at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 3. So again, if we look back at the original function, again, it's a degree 3. It has an in behavior of down, up. So it's going to go down. It's going to come up and hit a max. It's going to go down and hit a min. And then it's going to go up from that point forward. We did all this work thinking about how these different pieces are affecting the shape of the graph, right? We talked about positive and negative magnets for each piece. Well, now we can just use the derivative to figure out exactly where the max and mins occur, and we can come up with an accurate sketch of f of x. So, again, we're going to make our table using our... By, we we're going to make our intervals by looking at where the derivative is 0. So we have negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 3, 3 to infinity. 
Okay, let's look back at our derivative. Our derivative is a quadratic. It has in behavior up, up, which means that the derivative is going to start positive. It's going to start positive. And then that means that f of x is increasing. Okay, the derivative is going to go negative, which means f of x is now decreasing. And then it crosses back and goes positive again, increasing in behavior up, up. In the middle, it crosses down to go negative. So that means that we have, it goes from increasing to decreasing at negative 2. It goes decreasing to increasing at positive 3. So we have a max at x equals negative 2. And we have a min at x equals 3. And we're done.